What's up guys, I am bringing you part 2 of how to record gameplay properly and I've done some digging into the catacombs of the internet and found some pretty interesting stuff. So one thing I forgot to mention with the last video in the extreme method, the Intensity Pro only captures 1080p at 30 frames a second. Now not, it's not really that big of a deal considering no games run at that and the only thing that runs at 60 frames that I know of is Call of Duty and Rage but the um, system itself does output at 60 simply because most TVs the standard is 60 Hertz and I know there's that whole 120 Hertz 240 480 Hertz marketing crap but you know 60 Hertz can be upscaled into that but basically 60 Hertz is the standard so that's what I notice when I record that my stuff is in 60 frames a second even though the game might not actually be in 60 frames it is outputted at 60 so whether that makes a difference in uh, image quality is up for discussion. My guess is probably not, but since we're coming up with ridiculous scenarios for millionaires, may as well throw this one out. So basically what this does is allow you to record 1080p at 60 frames a second. And the only way to do that is um, you have to get a special capture card, which uses the SDI format, not HDMI and there is a converter that converts from HDMI to SDI the capture card itself is technically capable of recording at a 4K resolution but the HDMI standard is only capped at something slightly above 1080 so until you know the HDMI cap gets increased I don't know if it can there might be bandwidth bandwidth constrictions then 1080 is pretty much what you're stuck at but the benefit with this setup is that you to record 1080 at 60 frames so basically what you have is similar to the extreme setup except that the unencrypted HDMI signal goes to the HDMI to SDI converter and then that spits out two SDI cables into your SDI capture card which um, records uncompressed 1080p at 60 frames a second so Again, this is only really useful in future generations. I don't know why I have a PS3 to the left. I guess I just didn't feel like changing the image. But yeah, nothing you want to invest in now. I guess you know it could be used with the PS3, and this would be the ultimate future-proof setup, I suppose, since the HDMI cap might be increased. So you know this will cover you basically all the way up to a 4K resolution, which I don't see being the standard for a very, very long time so just wanted to throw that out and the card itself I think is like 600 bucks and the HDMI to SDI converter the cheapest one I could find was about 300 and then you know on top of the money you're spending on the Fury already just for the converters and whatnot alone you're looking at like you know close to fourteen hundred dollars and that's not mentioning you know the insanely good computer you would have to have so yeah really not worth it but just wanted to throw it out there for those of you that are curious. Uh, this next one that I found is actually pretty interesting. It uh, What it does is it's a recorder box that has a built-in um, encoding engine, I guess you would say. And it, what it allows you to do is capture 1080p at 60 frames, but it is compressed in H.264. So it really doesn't make that big of a deal because, you know, it's not a huge difference between uncompressed and H.264 probably won't be able to tell unless you you know stare at it from like an inch away and you know side by side with a lot of scrutiny and um, yeah so this will cover component input with you know some adapters so you can capture it 720 from the PS3 now and future proof for the next gen consoles all the way up to 1080p at uh, 60 frames through HDMI and you, well I guess you can capture PS3 stuff through HDMI too and personally I think this is the best way to go when it comes to high-end recording and the reason for that is you have a few options whether you're going analog or HD and simply because you can go all the way to 1080p at 60 frames and the cost is not too unreasonable um, on top of that it doesn't require that many system resources because the encoding is done through hardware inside the box itself versus your computer so it connects to USB and as long as you have a reasonable hard drive uh, you should be good to go there so you know you could probably run it on your grandma's computer okay maybe not but it doesn't require any too hardcore of a setup so 
Uh, the cost is a little prohibitive if you're going to HDMI capture. The box itself is $500 plus the Fury, which you know is $400. So as much as I would love to do this myself, it's a $900 investment, which still isn't cheap. But honestly, I think it's the best bang for your buck if you're going high quality. So, you know, if you have it, it might be worth taking a look into. So I think this is better than the first ultra quality method I posted simply because you're not capped at uh, 1080p at 30 frames you can go all the way up to 60 so since they're both compressed this is you know definitely the way to go although I think the other method is a bit cheaper and I think it's also better than the um, extreme method because again you get about 60 frames and I know the extreme is uncompressed but I doubt you'd be able to tell the difference and you don't need an insane computer to be able to do this so my recommendation if you're going for high quality recordings this would probably be it I read up some reviews and the feedback on it is pretty positive I saw some demos on YouTube looks like a solid product alright guys if I find anything else I'll let you know that's it for now peace out